I'm not really sure about this. I mean, can you really have a top five planes? I mean, how do you compare the Fairy Delta II with a Sopwith Pup? Or the Avro Vulcan with, well, the Douglas Dakota? I mean, they just don't compare. Oh well. I'm Rob Bell, and this is the Institution of Mechanical Engineers Top 5 Aircraft at the Royal Air Force Museum, Cosford. Five amazing planes and five examples of outstanding engineering. Sir Frank Whittle, a member of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, changed the world we live in. Now, many engineers start with a piece of technology and try and make it into something that people need. Well, Whittle here worked the other way around. He started with a need, the need for long distance air travel. He saw that this would require an aircraft that could fly at high altitudes, where the thin air would give less drag. And he understood that that would mean a completely new type of engine, one that didn't have a propeller. Whittle never set out to invent the jet engine. That was just the logical consequence of the challenge he set himself. And what really is amazing is that Whittle saw this need for long range, high altitude flight in 1928, when air travel was very much still in its infancy. And he, was only 21 years old. In at number five on our list is the first to combine Whittle's engine with an advanced aerodynamic design, the Soviet MiG-15. Now the Russians had based their jet engines on German designs without much success. But luckily for them, in 1946, the British agreed to sell some Rolls-Royce Neen engines as a gesture of goodwill. The Russians took those engines, dissected them, analyzed and copied them, or what we call reverse engineering, and they were fitted into the MiG-15. Now this is one of the first production aircraft with swept wings. And you can see it here, look. Now, this design feature was the result of extensive German wind tunnel work, and it gives a reduced drag as the aircraft approaches the speed of sound. Basically, this design feature helps the plane fly faster. The MiG-15 saw service in the Korean War, where its high performance came as a shock to the Western powers. Well, there you have it, the MiG-15, our number five aircraft the excellent product of Soviet engineering, British engine technology, and German aerodynamic know-how. Designed by Rex Pearson, our number four aircraft is the Vickers Wellington. Now I've come here to the museum's conservation center to see its innovative geodetic space frame that's usually hidden behind a fabric skin. And it's utterly mesmerizing. Now this was the creation of Barnes Wallace. In the 1930s, many aircraft had a rectangular internal framework with extra pieces then fitted to the outside to create the curved streamlined shape. But this was both heavy and took up a lot of room inside. Wallace's innovation was to make the structural members follow the curved shape of the fuselage and the wings. This made it strong, but also light, which enabled the Wellington to carry a heavy load. Even more importantly, whole pieces of this structure could be shot away and the plane would still be able to fly. It's what engineers call a redundant structure, where you can remove one piece and the load will be taken up by its neighbors, which is very useful in a structure like this. If, for example, you're trying to fly home in a damaged plane. Built in more numbers than any other British bomber and in service from the very first day of the war to the last, our number four aircraft, the Vickers Wellington.
And what makes a great piece of engineering? Well, we might all go on about the most innovative, the fastest, the largest, the most exciting, but the sure sign of a great product is one that's made in large numbers and used for a long time. Almost 9,000 of our next choice were built and it's been in service for more than 80 years. So there's no doubt about it. It is a great plane. Our number three aircraft is the de Havilland DH-82 Tiger Moth. The secret to the Moth's success is simplicity of design. That meant it was cheap to buy and cheap to run. The engine and airframe needing very little maintenance. This was a dependable, reliable workhorse. It was easy to fly, but hard to fly well. Perfect characteristics for a trainer aircraft, allowing novice pilots to safely develop their skills. The Tiger Moth first flew in 1931 and stayed in production until 1945. And it wasn't just a trainer. Early in the war, it was used to hunt U-boats. Now there's a design feature of this aircraft that I particularly enjoy, and it's tucked away behind here. It's the engine, which is upside down, unusually. And you can see that you've got its cylinders down here beneath the crankshaft. Now the propeller is connected directly to the crankshaft, which is another example of this simple design. With fewer parts, there are fewer things that could go wrong. And this arrangement gave a high propeller position, keeping it away from the ground and a low engine, which gives the pilot better visibility. Concorde no longer flies. The SR-71 Blackbird no longer flies, but there are still more than 250 moths earning their keep around the world. And that's why this is our number three choice, the DH-82 Tiger Moth. Our number two aircraft was designed around its engine, the Hawker Sidley Kestrel. Now this was a prototype to the famous Harrier jump jet, and it stands example to the way engineers build on each other's ideas to make an innovative leap forwards. A French engineer called Michel Vibault came up with the idea of using engines to drive fans, blowing air through movable nozzles to lift an aircraft into the air. Now the Bristol Engine Company was asked to look at the idea and they refined it by using air from the jet engine's compressor rather than having separate fans. Now this engine proposal was taken to Hawker Aviation and by working closely together they came up with the final configuration. Now the Kestrel has four air nozzles in total. It's got two air jets at the front from the compressor, one on each side, and there are two exhaust jets at the back here from the turbine. The aircraft would rise into the air on these four columns of gases, the nozzles then rotating or vectoring to drive it forwards. No one single person invented this aircraft. It was created by engineers working together as a team, taking each other's ideas and improving them as they went. So, what have we chosen as our number one? Well, it had to be really, didn't it? The Institution of Mechanical Engineers' number one aircraft is the Spitfire. And not just any Spitfire. This is Spitfire number K9942, the oldest in existence. And this very aircraft saw action over the skies of Dunkirk. If I had a pound for every time someone asked me what my favorite part of the Spitfire was, honestly. Well, let me tell you, it is this rivet right here. Actually, it could be that one next to it. 
God, there's so many, you lose track. I'll tell you what, it's the rivets generally on the Spitfire because when it was designed, it was unusual to use these smooth, flush headed rivets instead of the much easier to use dome headed rivets like this. And that's because these flush rivets gave the lowest possible drag and thus the highest possible speed. That tiny design detail added an astonishing 22 miles per hour to the aircraft's speed. And this was proven by testing the aircraft with split peas glued over the top of the flush rivets. And whilst you're asking, my second favourite feature of the Spitfire is this fillet, where the wing joins the fuselage. And these were also added to help reduce drag. And like so much with this aircraft, it just goes to show that what looks and feels right generally tends to work right as well. Supermarine Spitfire K9942, number one in the Institution of Mechanical Engineers top five aircraft at the RAF Museum Cosford. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this video and if you don't agree with our choices then let us know in the comments section below. Tell us what your top five would be and why. If you can, why not come down and visit the RAF museums here at Cosford and at Hendon in London. And if you're interested in finding out more about an exciting career in engineering then click the link below. Perhaps even consider becoming an engineer yourself because the world needs more engineers.